Hi guys and welcome back to Back of Beyond Tech. So today I'm going to talk about Vega and the latest news and rumours surrounding it. But I'm going to do this over some Battlefield 1 gameplay. Um, I just thought I'd mix it up and it means I don't have to look at a camera and you guys don't have to look at me. So guys, as you might well know, I've moved over to Intel on the CPU front. But that doesn't mean I'm not interested in what AMD are going to do with Zen and Vega, especially as the launch is just around the corner. So I think we should start by looking at what we know about Vega. So back in the middle of September this year, AMD's Chief Technology Officer, Mark Papermaster, confirmed that Vega-based cards will be shipping during the first half of 2017. Papermaster also confirmed that Vega will come with significant performance and power efficiency improvement over the current Polaris architecture cards that are so popular in the $200 bang for buck market that both Nvidia and AMD are scrabbling to get a large chunk of. We also know that Vega will be based in the same 14 nanometer FinFET process as Polaris, which basically means the transistors on the die are in a fin shape. It will also ship in two flavors, Vega 10 for the enthusiast market and Vega 11 for the Main Street market. Needless to say, I'm more interested in Vega 10, as I imagine most of the people watching this video are, and how well Vega 10 will perform against Nvidia's latest enthusiast offerings, the GTX 1070, 1080, and possibly the Titan XP as well. As for performance and raw spec of the Vega 10, that's still largely all hearsay and rumour with many outlets such as video cards and WCCF tech and more reporting new numbers on a weekly basis. Looking around the internet for the past few days though, I think it's safe to say that there is a general consensus among these sites that Vega 10, or Greenland to quote its product code name, will boast specs close to the following. It will definitely be based on Global Foundry's 14 nanometer FinFET process. As this is uh, as this has now been mass production proven through the release of Polaris and has also given both Global Foundries and AMD the necessary time to hopefully streamline the process before launching Vega. It is likely to have up to 16GB of gddr 5 x or HBM2 as an onboard graphics buffer. Given that the Fury X card used HBM1 and AMD were directly involved in the development of this technology, I'd be very surprised if Vega was not using HBM2 if for no other reason than marketing. Currently, Nvidia can't market any of their products as using this technology. And rightly or wrongly, HBM2 is a large buzz around it in the technology world. This would give the card an impressive, theoretical, 2048-bit memory bus, easily beating out even the Titan XP at 384-bit. The amount of raw compute power is still in the realms of internet rumour, but based on the latest numbers I've been reading, it's safe to say that the rumour mill have Vega 10 sporting 4096 shader processors, giving a theoretical 10 teraflops of compute power. If true, that level of raw compute power puts it just behind Nvidia's Titan XP at 11 teraflops and well ahead of the GTX 1080 at 8.9 teraflops. Base and boost clock speeds are still unknown. I haven't found any rumours online that I would put any faith in. I can only surmise that it will fall behind Pascal base cards, as Polaris base cards have been clocked very conservatively and they use the same 14 nanometer FinFET process that Vega will be based on. I might be wrong, and I hope I am, as this is one of the major disappointments I've had when viewing the Polaris products so far. So guys, what does all this mean? Well, not a lot at the moment. It's still all rumour and su supposition. What is clear is that AMD need an answer to the GTX 1070 and 1080 if they want to capture more of the enthusiast GPU market. My feeling is that Vega will be the answer to these products. It is no coincidence that both Zen and Vega are going to launch roughly in parallel and based on the actual benchmarks out there for Zen being very impressive, it points to Vega also being an impressive product. If the current specs surrounding Vega are even 90% correct, we are in for an amazing card coming from Team Red that will shake up the enthusiast GPU market and bring choice back to us users and also boost AMD's financials which will allow them to continue to innovate and hopefully bring enough market pressure to bear on both Nvidia and Intel to force them to look at their own pricing and marketing strategies. Now whatever bias you have towards Team Red or Team Blue, you have to admit that is a great thing for you, the consumer. 
Well guys, that's my thoughts on Vega and the rumours around it. I personally hope that it lives up to the hype. I hope you liked the video and got something out of it. So guys, you know what to do. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. And don't forget to comment and subscribe. Catch you later for some more great tech news. Bye.